Thank you, Tim, for welcoming us into your home. Pleasure. You are an art advisor specialized in old master paintings. That's right, yeah. But today we're here to talk about your collection of Japanese ceramics. Mm -hmm. Let's go back in time a little bit. Mm -hmm. I know you studied Japanese in Cambridge, mm -hmm. but that's not what put you on that path, really, is it? Um, not really. I mean, as part of the course, I did study some Japanese art, and I certainly learned about ceramics there, particularly the Rimpa school and Ogata Kenzan. So there was a seed there for sure. But actually the first acquisition was by an English potter called Elspeth Owen, mm -hmm. who um, lives just outside Cambridge. Um, and just one day I was passing a shop and I saw in the window this uh, very beautiful earthenware pot. Very simple, quite sort of rustic, very humble. And what I sort of realised is many of the qualities of this pot are qualities that I've since learnt to look for in Japanese ceramics. Yes, so that's the very first. That was the very uh, first one, yes, in 1989, mm. I think mm. it was. So let's fast forward a few years. Um, this original interest in British ceramics led to a very intense focus on Japanese ceramics. So how did that happen? Well, the most important event was actually buying this flat here. So I finally had somewhere where I could show ceramics. So with that, sort of foundation, if you like. I started looking at online auctions, um, galleries here in the UK, Oxford Ceramics. But probably the most significant moment came a couple of years after I moved here in 2013. I was in New York and I knew the name Shiro Tsujimura. Then I got a phone number for a gallery, the Apodo Gallery in New York, um, the director Shoko. We had a very nice chat and I started to look at uh, Japanese ceramics through the eyes of a Japanese dealer gallerist and someone who's ultimately become a friend. And so can you show us some of the pieces you acquired from Shoko Aono? Sure. Yes, one of the first pieces is the vase just up there on your right ah. by Yui Tsujimura, who's a wonderful uh, ceramicist. Um, what's so immediately striking about this is the beautiful natural ash glaze. And this is a glaze that's actually not applied to the vessel before it's fired, but actually it's the result of the ash um, from the firewood um, fusing with the body this very pale grey clay. And what's particularly beautiful is this part here, which is called Tobo no Mei in Japanese. It's um, the dragon's fly eye and it's vitrified natural ash and it's uh, very beautiful how it flows around the indentations and gathers there. Yui Tsujimura is the son of Shiro Tsujimura. Uh, who is a highly respected, very much sought after ceramicist. I believe you have some pieces by him too. That's correct, yes. Um, perhaps the most important piece, again, I got from Shoko Ono in the Apoda Gallery. It's um, this beautiful round vase here in Kohiki style, which is this creamy white slip it's mm. dipped in. But as you can see, it's really worked the surface. It has real life and vitality to it. And Tim, I can't help noticing that the uh, aesthetic of this group of ceramic is completely different from the Shiro Tsujimura. So what can you tell me about these? Well, those three works are by a young artist called Takuro Kawata, um, who's very successful internationally. Um, he is trained classically, but he's um, a young artist who really pushes the boundaries um, with technique, with glazing. Um, this piece is gold, but what's striking about it is he's um, played with this idea of glaze shrinkage, which occurs much more subtly in older pieces, but he's applied a very thick glaze and it's literally falling off. It's very sculptural. It's a tea bowl, but it's not a tea bowl. Um, a very interesting artist, I have to say, one I like very much. Tim, all these pieces around us, um, I couldn't help noticing, are utilitarian uh, ceramics. It seems that you are not uh, really uh, attracted by more sculptural, more abstract works. Is that the case? Yes, that's absolutely true. Um, I think in some ways it's intuitive. You like what you like. Um, beyond that, for me, the tea bowl, and I'm not the first person to say this, is sort of the apex of Japanese ceramics. You know, it comes from this wonderful Zen Buddhist inspired tea ceremony. In terms of the vessels themselves, there is this idea of this space inside them, um, the outside, the inside, and a great attention to every aspect of the bowl. And this is the same with the sake cups, which are, if you like, small tea bowls. They have the same formal qualities. 
This is by an important artist called Kakurezaki Ryuchi, working in the Bizen tradition, which focuses on the richness of the clay. And here, he's unusually put a shino, white glaze on it, which is not something you would traditionally do. Another favourite is this sake cup by Yamada Kazu, a very important artist working in the shino tradition. This is actually called fire shino because it's a thick white glaze, but it has this very fire-like appearance. Beautiful lip, one has to remember these are used to drink from, um, and a lovely foot here. You can see the richness of the clay there and the burnt scorch marks, which are also quite sought after. This is a very lively piece by Toru Ichikawa, who's a pupil of uh, Kakurezaki Ryuchi. Again, a very sculptural form. He's an interesting artist because he treats the surface as if it's a painting. There's so much going on here, and the form itself is very, very sculptural. And it's a lot of richness in the gold here. And I see you've kept the box. Um, <laughs> I know that at the beginning of your uh, collection, it's not something you paid attention to. Mm, absolutely right, but I've learned the mm. hard way. No, the box is a very important. Um, pieces are worth much less if they don't have the box. And often the box is like the autograph of the piece in some ways, because mm -hmm. not all these pieces are signed. So it's important to have it for that reason. One of my particular favourites is this tea bowl by Ryoji Koe, a very famous artist who sadly died this year. Um, this piece is actually quite restrained for him. It's um, very simple porcelain with this lovely transparent glaze with lovely cracking pattern, a beautiful foot, which is an important aspect of all these vessels. And here you can see um, shell imprints, which is where the pieces will rest on each other in the kiln. So that's a nice feature to have. So it's in one of the things that strike me in your collection um, are the strong connections that exist between uh, several of the pieces. For example, you have works by father and son. Yes, like Chiro and Yui Tsujimura. And also uh, master and pupils. Yes, uh, with the Gwenomus we saw Kakurezaki, Ryuchi and Toru Ichikawa. What I also find fascinating is what you've been able to achieve uh, with a limited budget, mm -hmm. within a limited space. Yes, um, you know, the time I had in lockdown really helped me focus, come up with a wish list and identify what I wanted to buy and also buy a number of pieces, albeit remotely from Japan, um, but it, it's worked. What I also find fascinating is this pool that Japan can mm. exert on so many of us uh, from afar. And this is what I'm hoping to highlight in this series of videos, this fascination that so many of us have for Japan. Mm. So thank you very much for taking the time to meet us today and oh. have a chat. Thank you very much. It's been really enjoyable. Thank you, thank Sophie. You.